right. Hey, look at this. We got a new, we got a new reel. Pretty excited about this. I want to set it up. This one's my big boy reel. I want to set it up for shark fishing. I'm going to have three reels. I'm going to have a small game fish reel. I'm going to have a medium pelagic reel. And I'm going to have a large pelagic reel for sharks and tarpon and maybe king mackerel. So we're going into Dutchman's Creek. I'm going to hook this one up and then I'll show you the other two. I'll show you what we're going to do. Come on, let's go. Okay, so we're going into Dutchman's Creek bait and tackle to get some line put on this reel. And I love this store because there's just a million things in here. And you know what? If we're going to make some rigs to go on our reel, we're going to need some, some tackle, right? So let's start by just getting some hooks. I like circle hooks. I'm going to buy three different packs. I'm going to buy some one-aughts. I'm going to buy some three-aughts. And actually, I already have some five-aughts at home. So I'll just get the one in the Ultra Point Mustard. They must be good. Um, I like mustard. I like ketchup. Oh, we're going to need some weight. I like pyramid weights. I like four ounce weights. That's just what I do. So I like big weights and little hooks. And I want to get a floats because I want to make some float rigs. I'll show you that in a minute. And then you know what? You can never go wrong with having some fish bites. And I put a little piece of that on there. Bag of worm. Mmm. And line. I'm going to need line. Sure. I'm, if I'm going to make rigs, I need, well, maybe not that much line. <laughs> All right. Let's go make some rigs. What do you, oh, let's get some bait. Yeah, <laughs> sure can't hurt. There it is, ready to go. Catch us a big fish. We'll catch a tuna. Maybe a marlin. <laughs> One of those 600 pound swordfish. <laughs> Don't let the sharks get it. <laughs> All right, let's go make some rings. All right, here we go. We got three different, three different rigs set up on three different rods for the little fish, the medium fish, and the big fish. <laughs> Let me check them out. All right, number one. Uh, I think this is 15 pound test mono. I've got tied on a four ounce weight at the bottom. Moving up, my first double drop, twisted here so it stands out with a little float rig, one out hook. And up a little further on the mono, second little twisted mono float rig, second hook, one out. And that goes up to a barrel swivel. Tied the braid. Sure, so this is your classic double drop rig. It's got a weight on the bottom and two hooks. I put the one on hooks on it, and uh, you know, you can, I made this one, but you can buy store bought ones. They work just fine, especially if you're starting out. And what are you gonna catch on these? You're gonna use some shrimp, and you're gonna be looking for whiting, pompano, croaker, and in March, some puffer, all um, basically panfish. Um, it's the smallest of the rigs. It's got the smallest of the hooks on it, and we'll probably be using shrimp on it and catch these fish. So let's move on to rig number two. This is 25 pound mono. We got three out hook, three out bead, float, bead protects the knot, another bead here, protect the weight. 25 pound mono, weight slides, bead, protect the barrel swivel to braid. So when this comes down, it's that bead, floats back up with the bait on it. So for rig number two, this is sort of just a modified Carolina rig. I got a three out hook, so I'm going to be throwing a little bit bigger hooks. Um, I got the float on there, but that's optional. You can take that off if you want. And actually, I got the, the four ounce weight, and I got it. I had it coming all the way down, but I didn't really like that. So later on, I moved it so it wouldn't slide down all the way to the float. And with this, I'm going to be putting on uh, probably minnows. So I'm going for bluefish, Spanish later in the fall, trout, and possibly even red drum on this, on this rig right here. Last one. We've got a five out hook, haywire twist, American fishing wire to a barrel swivel. We've got 40 pound mono, four ounce weight that slides, bead to protect it. And the mono is probably about three or four feet long. We tie that on with a very unpretty but hopefully successful FG knot. So, no barrel swivel there, so we can get this all the way up through the line. 
Yes, a very ugly FG knot, but I need to trim back um, the tag ends there. Uh, a little bit bigger hook, the 5 out hook with the steel leader, the American Fishing Wire, because we're going to get into some toothy critters here. We can be going for sharp nose, bonnet head if we like, and even, who knows, a tarpon, you just never know. So this is heavier line, bigger fish, the biggest fish. So we're going to try all three of these. Let's see what we can do. First of all, oh my gosh, traffic. Have you? <laughs> there's been so many people on the island. People thought that paid parking was going to freak people out or whatever. I don't know about that i'm just telling you this is a parking lot they should just charge them for parking right there on the road let's get out and go fishing uh so my bait i've got i've got the cut up piece of bait which i'll put on my on my biggest rig i've got um some shrimp uh that's just from fresh shrimp cut up which will go on my smallest my double drop rigs and i i threw the cast net earlier today and i got some both some minnows which are jumping out of the bucket and some live shrimp so we'll put those on the minnows on the three out hook and the middle rig and the, the shrimp on the double drop so let's get started let's see what we're gonna hear we're gonna, let's reach in and get out a live shrimp and we'll put him on the double drop rig we'll start with that rod and rig first so here we got a live shrimp and i've also got a piece of this the cut fresh shrimp on there so that's on my little float rig on the bottom the fresh shrimp on the top hook and we're just going to cast that out and see what we can get those the fresh shrimp should work you know, the live shrimp should work really well right like who doesn't like live shrimp i mean like if you're a fish Number two, the second rig. This is the three out hook. And this is actually a little uh, pinfish, um, live little pinfish I caught. And I got a couple of minnows as well. Thirdly, on the big five out hook, this is called bridling. I have taken a piece of mono line and made a loop. I put a hole through the fish with a screwdriver and just popped the hole and put the mono through, the loop through. So I could take my five out hook. Now here's how it works. I put it through the loop on one side. I put it through the loop on the other side and it holds it. Now, if I spin it, I can get that fish all the way to the top. I can put the hook just through like the backbone of the fish and this will leave all of the hook exposed. So if a big fish comes along and picks it up, he's gonna get that hook in his mouth. It's not way embedded in the fish. So that's called bridling. And so that's gonna be our third rig right there. So we got all three rigs. We're gonna just cast them out here and see what we can get. Uh, one of the things I had trouble with this day was the sand, it was actually the tide going out, the sandbar um, was really far out there. So I had to walk out pretty far to cast, uh, obviously for the big beta we want to cast pretty far anyway, but usually I don't have to cast that far, but it was just totally flat all the way out there. So I've got my three rods, my three rigs, and wouldn't you know it, look what's in right in front. As soon as I start fishing, some guys start like swimming down right in front of my rods. Why does that always happen to me? <laughs> anyway, I got a hit fairly early on the middle rod. So this is our three out hook on our modified Carolina with the float rig that we're using to pin fish. And we got ourselves a nice little blue fish here. Oh yeah, blue fish. Now I don't mind eating a nice little blue fish. This guy's a little small. He was probably about... 12 inches or something like that so I'm gonna let him go um, but but nice to catch our first fish there on the middle rig our Carolina rig right there and then I got another one right after that so they were definitely a couple of blues out there this one's even a little smaller uh, definitely a couple of blues out there a little school of them and I, I was getting them so that's nice uh, surprisingly having a little bit of trouble with the double drop and the fresh shrimp that kept stealing my my shrimp so zero for the double drop two for the middle rig and zero for the shark rig now look how ridiculously far I had to walk to get to the sandbar. <laughs> So it was it was slightly exhausting, but it started to pay off. My my little live shrimp there um, started getting me some some actually some decent uh, whiting. I got this one and I got one previously who's already in the bucket, and these are about 12 inch whiting. So I'm keeping both of those for some fish tacos, and I'm actually going to catch a third one here. Um, so I'm going to have the total of three on the double drop, two on the Carolina rig, and zero on the shark rig. But I'm going to let this little whiting go because I already had those two, and this guy turned out to just be a little bit smaller so I gotta let him go meanwhile <laughs> every time I wanted to get one of these I was walking out to that sandbar for like a half 
One thing I can say, but you just saw me walk all the way out there, with that sandbar being all the way out there, that's a lot of work. It's like, I'm working it. I'm working too hard to catch a flying. <laughs> At least it's not croaker. An hour uh, just to cast the line, and it was rather exhausting. Yes, at least it wasn't Croker. So I had to take a break. I had to get some lunch. So Kim and I decided we were going to go to Fixin's. Have you been to Fixin's yet? Uh, we went twice, actually. My wife goes there kind of all the time for lunch. Um, and she takes she takes the the group there from her work uh, for breakfast once a month, actually. So I was like, I got to check it out. She keeps she keeps raving about it. So I will say they have, um, it's it's kind of a big little joint walking around. There's like all these little cubby holes and stuff. I'm like, where's my wife? She was already in there. They have both lunch and breakfast. So you got to look at the menu and flip it over and i will say the food is really fresh that's the one thing i was impressed about it um really fresh food uh, they had some specials also they're out on the board you can when you walk in you can kind of see them right there and uh, the chicken cacciatore i think kim's getting the chicken cacciatore and i just got like a chicken salad wrap but like it was super fresh the cacciatore was really good i think that's what that is anyway is that cacciatore? i don't know i'm not a restaurant tour i just like to eat the food <laughs> but i did have this with this chicken salad sandwich and it was really fresh and it was really good so i would recommend you go to go to fixins check it out it's good they get some good food there good lunch good i haven't had the breakfast but the, the lunch is definitely good so back on the beach my buddy bob called me up and he's like i got a couple of friends we want to go surf fishing we don't really know what we're doing you want to come out with us and just show us the ropes and i was like yeah i finally got a chance so i got bob out there they're on double drop rigs store bought four ounce weight with the one odd hooks and uh and bob got a whiting he so like yeah not a kind of a little guy there but hey if you, it's, it's your first time getting out there surf fishing and you get a whiting, you're doing all right. And the next fish up, a croaker. Uh, nobody likes croaker. Come on. What are you doing? But, hey, we got we got into a good variety here. They got a pompano. And, um, and, and, and after that, actually, the best fish that we caught was this one right here. You pulled up a, a black drum. So all that on just some fresh shrimp on the double drop rig so you can do really good with those meanwhile i was trying to get i was trying to get a shark right so look at my my rig all the way to the right there watch this watch this watch this boom see that little hit i was like oh i just got a hit i'm gonna get a shark so i kind of like hustled over there as fast as i could <laughs> so i was very excited because i had a big piece of cut fish on there that's the five odd hook a rig and um so i started just i'm gonna reel it in and i'm like oh yeah i definitely got one i got one and you know you can kind of feel like at first even a big hit you can see the rods bending right and you're like oh this is it's a i don't know it's not you can tell that it stops pulling and you just start dragging it in and you're like uh okay what did i got here and it and, and you can kind of guess what it is if once you have enough experience catching fish you kind of can figure out which each one was and i kind of knew this one was going to be a shark but uh not the shark i was looking for this is more just like one of those little like dogfish type foot long foot and a half like little sharks you just catch in in july very typical uh to be catching them so i let him go go swim go grow up or whatever you're gonna do but go be a shark and then i actually did get a nice hit and i was like we were just about to leave too and um salt on the lens right <laughs> it's what happens when you're out there all day and and i did get this nice hit and i'm like oh this must this must be the shark because he kept taking a run and i'm like i got a big piece of that's five odd hook i got this big piece of bait like it's got to be something decent so we're like all right let's check it out reel it in but then i knew like i'm telling you you can tell fish it laid down right it laid down and i knew right then and there i was like this is not going to be a shark and i dragged it up on the beach and it was exactly what i thought it was going to be a stingray so no big shark for me <laughs> i got the stingray hey shout out to my guy william we were down in the in the in the sporting goods shop the other day and we got to meet each other and uh, he's out there fishing having a good time and catching some pompano so so keep up the good work um william and uh, we'll see you next time we're out there getting some getting some rigs set up okay i hope you guys have a good one get out there let's go fishing